This is a clinical radiological discussion of avascular necrosis of hip. If you are not following our page Radiology Doodles, please subscribe to our page. We discuss all the topics of MD and DNB exam questions of radiology in our page. My name is Dr. Aishwarya. So overview of our video, we are going to discuss normal vascular supply of hip, pathogenesis of AVM, imaging, involving X-ray, CT, MRI, staging, all the three staging systems and invasive and non-invasive management of AVN in detail. What does avascular necrosis of hip mean? Is it same as osteonecrosis? Let's see. Osteonecrosis is reduction of blood supply to the bone. When this happens, there will be ischemic cell death of bone and the marrow. This is an inclusive term. What all it involves? It involves avascular necrosis, which is a subtype of osteonecrosis involving epiphysis of the bone. There is a type called bone infarct, in which osteonecrosis occurs in metaphysis or diaphysis of the bone. Let's discuss avascular necrosis in this video. Coming to the causes of avascular necrosis, there are some common causes like trauma, abuse of corticosteroids, idiopathic causes, sickle cell anemia, alcoholism and collagen vascular disorders. There are some uncommon or rare causes like pancreatitis, drug induced where immunosuppressants are used in pregnancies, radiation therapies, vasculitis, leukemia and in cases of thromboembolism or atherosclerosis. Before moving into the pathogenesis, first we have to see what is the normal blood supply of head of the femur. So this is the diagram of femur with greater trochanter, lesser trochanter and the artery supplying it. Let's start labeling the arteries. This is the deep femoral artery, the major supply of femoral head. From it arises the lateral circumflex artery and the medial circumflex artery which surround the neck of the femur and then they give ascending branches to the head of the femur. Next there is a foveal ligament along which which runs a foveal artery which also supplies head of the femur. So the major blood supply to the head and neck of femur comes from lateral epiphyseal branches and superior retinacular branches of these arteries. So what happens in avascular necrosis? Now the femoral head and neck has a normal fatty marrow within and there will be interrupted blood supply in one of the causes which we discussed. So the weight bearing area of the head of the femur shows reduction in blood supply and there will be zone of cell death. So in the zone of cell death the variety of cells are present which have their own timeline of death. That is the hematopoietic cells die the earliest within 6 to 12 hours of interrupted blood supply. Bone cells will take 12 to 48 hours and marrow cells will survive up to 2 to 5 days. Also due to interrupted blood flow there will be neovascularization or hypervascularity which occurs. Because of these changes there will be a new zone created called creeping zone of substitution which separates the viable bone from the non-viable part of the bone. So this creeping zone appears as double line sign on MRI which we will discuss further. The third change occurring is progressive bone weakening. Already there is a zone of cell death. Now the bone weakens over there and it starts necrotizing. And the weakened bone will undergo subchondral fractures which is also seen as crescent sign on x-ray which further collapses and leading to deformity and degenerative arthritis in advanced stages of avascular necrosis. Coming to imaging, we'll discuss X-ray, CT, MRI and bone scan all in little detail. So for X-ray will be the initial modality of choice during the initial workup of the case. It also helps in classification systems along with the MRI and clinical points. CT is used for surgical planning. MRI is the most sensitive and specific modality and investigation of choice. Bone scan is an alternate in case MRI shows indeterminate findings. First let's discuss the x-ray findings. So in x-ray anterior superior aspect of the 
Head of femur is the most common site to be involved, which is a weight-bearing region. We saw the pathogenesis earlier. Initially, there will be varying degrees of sclerosis and lucencies, a mixture of both seen. If it is homogeneously sclerotic, it's called snow cap sign, which also shows wedge-shaped or U-shaped appearance. It's called wedge or semilunar pattern, also called bite sign. There can be subchondral fracture appearing as a lucent thin crescent line which is a type of pathological fracture also called as crescent or rim sign. In later stages where the head will collapse it can cause step defects and in very much advanced stages there will be degenerative arthritic changes in the involved hip. These are the signs on x-ray coming to CT. CT is less sensitive than MRI or bone scan but more sensitive than x-ray. It is used to see the extent of the disease, the collapse of head and in case any loose bodies are present, they are seen well on CT than x-ray. It's also used for surgical planning. So the normal femoral head on CT shows this asterisk sign which is lost in AVN that is initial stages. That's the first sign on CT which we can see. In later stages, we can see the destructive changes in the head. Coming to the most important part that is MRI. So first let's see what happens on T1 weighted images. Normal fatty marrow appears both T1 and T2 hyper intense. So in cases of edema where water molecules replace the fat molecules, they will be decreased signal intense areas like these. So this is the involved hip. Next here we can see some low intensity bands which signify the ischemic bone. The subchondral fracture also appears as a crescentric low intensity line on T1 weighted images. Moving on to T2 weighted images we can see some joint effusion around the head and neck of the involved hip. There will be loss of normal marrow hyperintensity signifying edema. Let me explain to you the most important double line sign. There will be a hyper intense inner band along the hypo intense outer line and this signifies the double line sign on T2 weighted imaging. This is highly specific for avascular necrosis of hip. This signifies the reactive interface which separates the non-viable bone from the viable bone. Moving on to fat suppressed sequences, we can see bone edema and joint effusion better on stir sequences. Now we'll see all the three types of staging, Ficatarlet, Steenberg and Arco. First we'll see Ficatarlet, most important part of the staging. Stage 0 or the preclinical stage has no clinical features or radiographic signs. Only hemodynamic changes are present at this stage. Then comes stage 1 that is pre-radiographic stage. In this we have increased uptake on bone scan only. Next, we have second stage. This is before the flattening of head or sequestrum formation. In this, radiographic signs will start appearing. That is diffuse porosis, sclerosis or cyst will start appearing. This is the sclerosis or cystic changes in the subchondral region which can appear in the stage. This is also called as pre-collapse stage or stage 2A because there is a transition phase also in stage 2. In transition phase what happens? There will be flattening or crescent sign which is seen. So let's draw it out. There will be flattening of the anterior superior or the weight bearing areas and subchondral lucency or fracture will start appearing also seen as crescent sign on x-ray which we saw prior. This is the transition phase or the stage 2b. Next we have late stages that is stage 3 or stage of collapse in which the contour of the head is broken on x-ray. You can see all clinical features in this radiographic features, hemodynamic and scintigraphy features. There will be loss of sphericity of head in this stage. Next moving on to the last stage that is stage of osteoarthritis. This is the advanced stage where there will be pronounced clinical features, radiographic features like flattening of the contour of the head, decreased joint space, there will be collapse of the head, there will be scintigraphic changes and the diagnostic on core biopsy would be arthritis in this stage. There can also be changes in the acetabulum of the involved hip joint. 
This was Wicket Allet's staging involving clinical features, radiographic features and hemodynamic changes. Let's move on to the Steenberg staging which mainly uses the imaging. It is similar to the Wicket Allet staging. Now here we can see the third stage has subchondral collapse and 5 and 6 has the arthritic changes or the late changes. Rest all of the stages 0, 1, 2 and 3 are similar to the Fickett Arlet staging. Now in Steenberg each stage is subdivided into stage A, B and C depending on the amount of the area involved. That is less than 15%, 15 to 30% and more than 30% of the area of the femoral head involved. Coming to ARCO staging. This ARCO stands for Association Research Circulation Osseous. Involves both clinical and radiological finding. Similar to the previous stagings where third stage involves collapse, advanced stage involves arthritis. Here third and fourth stage are subdivided into A, B, C depending on the area involved similarly like 15 and 15 to 30 percent more than 30 percent done with the staging let's move on to the prognostic factors most important prognostic factor is the percentage of head involved so if more than two-third of the weight bearing surface of the femoral head is involved there is 74 percent chances of collapse of the involved head other prognostic factors are older age has poor prognosis that is more than 40 years larger bmi has poorer prognosis that is more than 24 kg per meter square increased joint effusion marrow edema are poor prognostic factors coming to management it mainly depends whether it is a pre-collapse stage or the collapse stage according to the classification in pre-collapse stages we use non-invasive methods of management that is there is restricted weight bearing on the involved leg bisphosphonates can be given anticoagulants are given vasodilators can be given increasing the blood supply and statins can be added hyperbaric oxygen therapy and pulsed electromagnetic therapies are the newer methods of non-invasive methods of management once the disease has reached the collapse stage or advanced arthritic stages we use the operative line of management there are two types that is joint preserving and joint replacing types in joint preserving management we use methods like core decompression where we remove a core of the deceased bone or the dead bone in order to decompress the pressure which reduces the bone edema promotes healing there is a second method that is rotational osteotomy in this head and part of a neck is cut and then rotated and fixed back again to the rest of the femur third thing we can do is bone grafting in which the dead tissue of the bone is removed and grafted with a vascular autologous graft in very much advanced stages we use joint replacing type of management in which hemi-arthroplasty can be done replacing femoral head or total hip replacement can be done. That's all about avascular necrosis. Follow our page Radiology Doodles on YouTube and Instagram for more exam related videos. Thank you.